In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. My brothers and sisters, as we gather to celebrate this Holy Eucharist, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son. Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. O God, who gladden us year by year with the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection, graciously grant that by celebrating these present festivities, we may merit through them to reach eternal joys. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Once, when Peter and John were going up to the temple for the prayers at the ninth hour, it happened that there was a man being carried past. He was crippled from birth, and they used to put him down every day near the temple entrance called the Beautiful Gate, so that he could beg from the people going in. When this man saw Peter and John on their way into the temple, he begged from them. Both Peter and John looked straight at him and said, Look at us. He turned to them expectantly, hoping to get something from them. But Peter said, I have neither silver nor gold, but I will give you what I have. In the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, walk. Peter then took him by the hand and helped him to stand up. Instantly, his feet and ankles became firm. He jumped up, stood, and began to walk. And he went with them into the temple, walking and jumping and praising God. Everyone can see him walking and praising God, and they recognized him as the man who used to sit begging at the beautiful gate of the temple. They were all astonished and unable to explain what had happened to him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm is, Let the hearts that seek the Lord rejoice. Let the, Let the hearts, hearts that, that seek, seek the Lord, Lord rejoice. rejoice. Give thanks to the Lord, tell his name, make known his deeds among the peoples. O oh, sing to him, sing his praise, to all his wonderful works. Let the hearts that seek the Lord rejoice. Be proud of his holy name. Let the hearts that seek the Lord rejoice. Consider the Lord and his strength. Constantly seek his face. Let the hearts that seek the Lord rejoice. O oh, children of Abraham, his servant. O oh, sons of the Jacob he chose. He, the Lord, is our God. His judgments prevail in all the earth. Let the hearts that seek the Lord rejoice. He remembers his covenant forever, his promise for a thousand generations, the covenant he made with Abraham, the oath he swore to Isaac. Let the hearts that seek the Lord rejoice. Alleluia, alleluia. This day was made by the Lord. We rejoice and are glad. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. Chapter 24, verses 13 to 35. Two of the disciples of Jesus were on the way to a village called Emmaus, seven miles from Jerusalem, and they were talking together about all that had happened. Now, as they talked this over, Jesus himself came up and walked by their side. But something prevented them from recognizing him. He said to them, What matters are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped short, their faces downcast. Then one of them called Cleopas answered him, you must be the only person staying in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have been happening there these last few days. What things? he asked. All about Jesus of Nazareth, they answered, who proved he was a great prophet by the things he said and did in the sight of God and of the whole people and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be sentenced to death and had him crucified. Our own hope had been that he would be the one to set Israel free. And this is not all. Two whole days have gone by since it all happened, and some women from our group have astounded us. They went to the tomb in the early morning, and when they did not find the body, they came back to tell us they had seen a vision of angels who declared he was alive. Some of our friends went to the tomb and found everything exactly as the women had reported, but of him they saw nothing. Then he said to them, You foolish men! So slow to believe the full message of the prophets, was it not ordained that the Christ should suffer and so enter into his glory? Then starting with Moses and going through all the prophets, he explained to them the passages throughout the scriptures that were about himself. When they drew near to the village to which they were going, he made us made as if to go on, but they pressed him to stray with them. It is nearly evening, they said, and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. Now while he was with them at table, he took the bread and said the blessing. Then he broke it and handed it to them, and the eyes were opened, and they recognized him. But he had vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, Did not our hearts burn within us as he talked to us on the road and explained the scriptures to us? They set out that instant and returned to Jerusalem. They saw, found the eleven assembled together with their companions, who said to them, Yes, it is true. The Lord has risen and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told the story of what had happened on the road and how they had how they had recognized him at the breaking of bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. It is an extraordinary blessing for myself and though my family that travels with me to be here in Fatima celebrating this Eucharist with all of you who are coming here also from all over the world. My fellow priests, two of which are from Ireland and father who is from India. What brings us together is our faith. And it's not simply our faith, obviously, in the Blessed Mother who appeared here, as we know, at the beginning of the 20th century. But it's more, even more than that, it's our faith in the risen Christ, who on Easter Sunday, just last week, we celebrated that feast, the greatest of all feasts for the church. 
I don't know if you are aware of this, but there's a very ancient tradition in the Catholic Church, a very old tradition in the church, which I, I love very, very much. And I first learned of it from my founder. I am a Jesuit priest. And St. Ignatius of Loyola, our founder, when he wrote the spiritual exercises, which is a 30-day retreat where he asked us to contemplate the life of Jesus, in the moments where he asked you to contemplate the resurrection, to pray about the resurrection, and to use the Gospels to pray about the resurrection, St. Ignatius introduces a meditation. He introduces a contemplation which is not in the Bible. And so he has to explain it to you. But it is a contemplation and a thought that was very prevalent in the church and still is today. When Jesus rose from the dead, the Bible tells us that Mary Magdalene and the other women went to the tomb to discover that it was empty. And when the women went back, the scriptures tell us that the first person who saw the risen Christ... The first person to experience the risen Christ was Mary Magdalene. You may remember the scene where Mary Magdalene doesn't recognize Jesus because she thinks it's the gardener. And when Jesus speaks, she recognizes him and embraces him. And Mar Jesus says, Mary, do Mary Magdalene, do not cling to me, for I have not fully risen. St. Ignatius says that even though the Bible and the Gospels do not mention it, we have to very strongly believe that in reality, the first person to witness the risen Christ was not Mary Magdalene. It was actually Mary, his own mother. How is it that a man so loved by his mother, who had to suffer the passion of her son, walked with him all the way to Calvary, stood at the foot of the cross when he died, held him in his arms, buried that son... It only is very logical that we would think that the first person that Jesus would choose to reveal himself to after the resurrection was his mother. To alleviate her sorrow. To fulfill her hope. They would ask Ignatius of Loyola, Father Ignatius, if that is true, why isn't it in the Bible? He says, because it's so obvious it doesn't have to be in the Bible. The first person Jesus appeared to was to his mother. It kind of makes sense. Because why is it that when the women are leaving the town to go to the tomb to finish the embalming of the body of Jesus with the ointments, why is it that Mary, the mother of Jesus, was not present in that group of women? Why is that? I can imagine that when Mary Magdalene and the other women went to the house of John where Mary was staying on that Sunday morning and knocked on the door to invite Mary, the mother, to go with them to the garden tomb, I could just imagine Mary, who had already experienced the risen Christ, telling Mary Magdalene and the other women, you, you go ahead, go without me. Maybe they thought that she was distraught, but she had already experienced the risen Christ and realize that they had to go to the tomb and have the experience of the empty tomb and therefore themselves experience the risen Christ. Jesus appeared first to his mother. Now, what I find extraordinary is that every time we read one of the resurrection accounts, be it to the women at the tomb, be it to Emmaus, the, men, the two men at Emmaus, be it to the disciples on the shores of the Sea of Galilee. Every time that a man or a woman has the experience of the risen Christ, Jesus risen from the dead, what happens is this empowerment which fills the people with such joy and hope and consolation that they have no choice but to go out. And to preach Jesus Christ risen. These men from Emmaus, after having walked six miles from Jerusalem, after experiencing the risen Christ, didn't stay there to finish their meals and maybe have dessert and a little cup of coffee afterwards. No. The gospel tells us that they immediately got up and ran back to Jerusalem to proclaim Jesus Christ is risen. Mary Magdalene and the other women ran back to Jerusalem to tell the apostles, Jesus Christ is risen. 
And therefore, that is what we need to experience. Mary, the mother of Jesus, has spent 2,000 years going throughout the world preaching the resurrection of her son Jesus. She went to Lourdes. She went to Guadalupe. She went to France. She's come to Portugal to proclaim that her son Jesus is not dead, that the tomb is empty, that Jesus Christ is risen, and that he is risen indeed. And how about us? What of us who every day have access to the risen Christ, who at the very least every single Sunday approach the altar of God to receive the Eucharist, the greatest gift that Jesus has given us, that every time we approach the priest or the minister, and are told that this is the body of Christ, and we say with such conviction, amen, for so it is. We are experiencing the risen Christ, and therefore we too, after experiencing Jesus Christ risen, must go out into the world and preach the good news that the tomb of Christ was empty, that the Lord is risen from the dead. That is our vocation. It is our responsibility. Preach it to your families and your friends, to your children. Preach it to your neighbors. Preach it in your towns and in your cities and in your villages. Preach the hope of the risen Christ as Mary has preached it throughout the world, as the apostles preached it. Jesus Christ, my brothers and sisters, is risen. And when Mary appeared to those three shepherds here in Fatima, she came to preach the hope of her son, the risen Christ. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Here at this sacred spot where the Most Holy Virgin Mary appeared, let us present our prayers to God our Father, who gave us the mother of his Son to be our mother. For all the faithful, that by obeying the appeals of Mary in a spirit of true penance and prayer, they may work wholeheartedly for the renewal of the world and for the kingdom of Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who exercise sacred ministry in the church, that they be attentive to the word of God, love it and proclaim it with fidelity and enthusiasm, as Mary did. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who govern nations, that they may work for justice and peace in the world and harmoniously collaborate in the just distribution of earthly goods among all the inhabitants of the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who suffer, that in union with, with Mary, consol consoler of the afflicted, in the loving care of others, and in the contemplation of the cross of Christ, they may find courage to face life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us here present and for our families, for our nation, for our city, that by the intercession of Mary, those who seek Christ may find him, sinners may be converted, Young people may open their hearts with enthusiasm, enthusiasm to the gospel. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of infinite goodness, attentive to the supplication of your people and with the prayers of Mary, mother of your son and mother of the church, to help us listen to our pleas and increase our faith. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Right. 
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice in yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. Receive, we pray, O Lord, the sacrifice which has redeemed the human race, and be pleased to accomplish in us salvation of mind and body, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exult in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Son and the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Son and the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time that he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Anthony, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Not the Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now. And Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer each other the sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. And may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. We pray, O Lord, that the reverent reception of the sacrament of your Son may cleanse us from our old ways and transform us into a new creation through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. May I request all the faithful to take out your religious objects and thus receive the blessing. Those who have the religious objects, religious articles, kindly take and keep on your hand. May Almighty God bless these religious articles and objects so that they may use it for the spiritual growth, that they may grow in holiness and thus experience your power and May they be protected from all kinds of evil forces and evil powers. May Almighty God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit bless these objects and bless those who are going to use it. May God bless you and bless these objects. God bless you. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.